Hello everyone, happy Friday. Thank you for joining me tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery patterns and kits. And I'm here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, it's a time where we can relax and craft and we work on a project together for about an hour every evening and we work on the project all the way from the beginning to end. So it's a great way uh, if you want to come try something new, uh, we can answer your questions while, while uh, we all work on it in real time together. So thanks again for joining me. We have been working on the Charming Chevrons quilt by Krista Watson of Krista Quilts. Uh, there is a link for this pattern in the Facebook post here. There's lots of time on this project yet, so uh, feel free to, uh, to join in the fun if you uh, haven't already. There's plenty of time. We are to the point that we have made all the chevrons that go in one direction. <laughs> so we got half of every chevron done, basically. So uh, today we're taking the time to clean up my machine because it's looking, it's been doing some hard work lately and it's getting awfully fuzzy. Uh, so I thought maybe it'd be a good time to uh, clean it up. We'll oil it and change the needle. We'll see how all that goes. I just started taking care of my machine. Uh, I used to just bring it into uh, the sewing machine guy whenever I was done with a really big project and it started to sound a little clunky. Uh, I never knew how to clean it or anything, but at the encouragement of all you guys, I have started to do that over the past few months. You know, should have done that from the get-go, but I'm doing it now. So uh, I will go through my process of what I do and if you have any tips let me know. I have my old sewing machine guide here from the 70s. It has uh, every place to oil and we will take a look at that. So that is the plan for tonight. We're sprucing up the machine so it's good to go for the next part of our project which is the chevrons that go in the other direction. <laughs> So same process, uh, we'll just uh, we'll just be having the chevrons go in the other direction so we can start getting our little, little zigzags going there. So that is the plan tonight. I am going to flip you around and we'll get going. Thanks again for joining me here. All right, turn you around. Okay, so here is my machine. I'm going to be shuffling you guys around a little bit tonight. Um, with a different tripod and everything, but here's my machine. It is a Sears Kenmore machine. I think it's from 1974. Uh, to start off, I am just going to uh, snip, snip this. We'll take our bobbins and uh, the thread off of the top. I'm even going to take these little little fluffer guys off too, because we'll we'll wipe this all clean. Oh, and I've unplugged it. So we are good to go there. All right, I'm gonna actually switch you guys over to my other tripod right away here. So we'll get a little lower here. Okay, so I'm gonna take the thread out of here. And we will snip off, here we go. I'll snip off our little leader here, we don't need that. And I'm gonna take out the bobbin as well. So here we go. You know what, let's angle a little bit, maybe we can get a little bit better light, there we are. So, all right, get down in there. I'm gonna take that out. We'll take the bobbin thread out. All right, oh my gosh, look, we have barely any bobbin uh, thread on there yet. So we, we did a pretty dang good job <laughs> making it this far. So I'll put that to the side as well. Um, I think I might actually, we'll start up again with, with some blue, I think, because uh, I am almost out of, of that gray. So we'll just let the gray be and I will switch to the blue. And I think I have a few blue bobbins. Oh, that, this might not be quite the same. I don't know. I think that's the same. We'll, uh, we'll switch to the blue after this. But okay, I have my guide right here. I'm going to go to the cleaning area. So the first thing, so here's the top. 
The first thing we're going to do is over here though, the caring for the machine, cleaning and oiling. I am going to uh, take my little brush and I'm going to dust it all out with the brush. And then we will unassemble our whole entire uh, shuttle assembly area here. So that is the plan. Oh no, so the sewing machine guy did not give me a lesson on this. I am strictly going from, from the, uh, the instruction book here that I have. All right, so I think I can get you guys in even closer. There we go. I'm gonna just set you guys right there. <laughs> Sorry, it's gonna be a little funny tonight. My tripod doesn't get this low. All right, so first off, uh, we have some tools that came with the machine. Here is one. It's a little brush uh, that has oil on the other side of it. So that's what we'll use. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do, you can kind of see it is all fuzzy up in here. Uh, I'm going to just start dusting it out. Yeah, look at all that right away. And I have a little paper towel here. We're going to, I'm gonna just kind of collect it here on the paper towel. I know it looks scary, all those pieces, but we'll, we'll get it. Um, definitely, if you think uh, taking a photo will help, then do that for sure. The other thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my presser foot off as well. So that's, look how dusty, dusty red that is. Let's just wipe that off with a paper towel. Yeah, this brush really, really grabs stuff though. I, I kind of like it. And this came with the machine too. But I've heard people use pipe cleaners before. So that's an option because a pipe cleaner will really kind of collect everything. Um, it'll grab onto it. And you know what? I'm going to remove the needle right away too. So here's my needle. I think we will grab a new needle when we're done here. Okay, so now everything's sort of off of this thing. Oh yes, line up everything in order. I will do that for sure. So let's just finish kind of seeing what we can get out of here. It's all super fuzzy everywhere. So I'm, I'm up a little bit higher here. I'm going to lower, lower this guy a little bit. Let's just brush him out. Wow, we're still getting a lot of dust out of here. So just getting in all the little places. So this is kind of what I do first. Get the top, get the little hairs down in there. I move the wheel around a little bit. There, look at all that fuzz. I think that red fabric is really, really giving off a lot of fuzz. Although maybe that's just because we're using it the most. All right, still some fuzz going out of there, but uh, I think we'll be okay. So, all right, let's, let's take the things out of here. I'm gonna show you again what this looks like. So it's the shuttle assembly is the whole thing. We got these levers that I'll undo, then we'll take them all out. And uh, where this arrow is, that's where we need to oil. So anytime there's an, an arrow, that's where we're oiling. So, all right, so there's just four little, or really three little bits here. So first up, we're gonna pop these guys open. And then this whole uh, shuttle assembly just kind of comes out, which is kind of scary. Ooh, look at that fuzz, Ugh, yuck. Good thing we're doing this, holy cow. We got it all up and stuck up, up there. All right, so this is the first part. I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna lay them down like this so I know that I just go back up like this. So I'm gonna just lay it out in front of me. Next up is this guy right here. This is the shuttle, or this is, yeah, this, so this is the shuttle right here. And uh, this will dust off too. This gets, this gets, we oil it right there. But first we need to get all this dust out of here. It's, it's pretty crazy. Fuzzles, fuzzles everywhere. Yeah, like, like look at all this that we got. So we are gonna have a whole paper towel full of all, all this fuzz. So now let's get up in here a little bit more. I think 
all the rest of this stays in here. So we only took two things out. But now, now that I have it out, we can really see in there a little bit better. And we can just see all the, all the gunk that's, that's in there. It just keeps falling out. So every once in a while, I'm just wiping off all the fuzzles. Now I can probably push up here again and more will fall down. And you can move the wheel every once in a while. Get in a different spot, brush it some more. I don't know, I think that's pretty good. I don't know if we're gonna get it better than that. Everything that's fallen out is kind of fallen out. Okay. Oop, there's some more fuzz. Let's see if we can oil this now. So, okay, here's my oil. I think I, think I just can just pull this off. So it's kind of like a magic little brush. So there we go. There's the oil and it's already kind of coming out of there. So I'm going to, uh, first we'll put it on the shuttle here. And first of all, I need to get this, uh, this little half moon shape guy here. That's the shuttle driver. That needs to be on the other side here for me to put it back in. So, all right. So this moon shape thing that's over there. I'm just looking at my diagram here. So this guy in here, we need to oil. I see more fuzz. We need to oil right back in here, it looks like. So I'm just gonna put a little itty bitty dab and I think that'll be fine. And then I'm also going to put a little dab on the shuttle here. So I think I'm just gonna go along the whole length there. All right. And now we put it back in piece by piece. That just sort of sits in there by itself. It's kind of balancing up there. And now we need the uh, shuttle race cover again. Let's, let's wipe that off a bit. I know I need one of those headlamps, I know, right? Uh, I've actually used one of those for crafting before. It's kind of fun. All right, so now here we got a little nubbin at the bottom that go slips into this guy right here. So I think I should just be able to gently put this back in. Oh, there we go. It fits right in there. And then all we got to do is pop these these guys on again. There. So that is that's it for the shuttle. Just spin it around a bit. Um, all right, so bobbin area is clean and ready to go. I'm gonna get this little brush on here again quick. Let's give it one last little brush. All the extra little fuzzles down here out too. But all right, step one is done. All right, let's... Uh, Let's see if this guy needs to just be wiped off. I'm just gonna get this in here, spin it around a few times. That can't hurt, right? I see a fuzzle stuck in that bobbin case. All right, so we're done here. I'm gonna just leave the bobbin out for a while while we work and then we'll put a, or a bobbin holder, we'll put a bobbin in there later. So, okay, that is done. Nice and clean. All right, next up, man, there's fuzzles everywhere. Fuzzles there, grab the fuzzles. Look at all that that we got out of there already. So, okay, I am going to get you up real high now. I know it's a little seasickness-y today, but let's get to the top of the machine. That is next, right here. So, uh, Let's take a look at here. So this is what we just did. We, uh, we uh, um, undid the levers, we took out all the pieces, kind of cleaned them up. Um, this little half moon thing we put on the left there. And where these arrows are, that's where I put the oil. So I put a little bit in there. It's kind of hard to tell where you're actually supposed to put the oil. So I just kind of get it in there somewhere, you know? <laughs> and then same here on the pin. All right, so next up, 
top of the machine. So I'm going to open this up and then look at all the little areas that we need to oil. So now I don't think it should actually be dirty in here. Like I don't, I don't think we'll find any fuzz, but it's almost just where, you know, here's a little wheel. Anywhere there's some moving parts, that's where we need to oil. And up here it looks like too. So let's um, look, I cracked this poor guy. Let's actually, let's give it a little wipe down quick. There's fuzz on the top everywhere. I got a clean cloth here. Should do this on the bottom here too, especially now that I have the needle and everything off. Okay. Ooh, it already looks happier. So this cover just comes off. So that's it. <laughs> that's, that's all there is to that. And now we can really take a look on the inside of here. Lots of stuff happening. <laughs> so there you can see, like, you know, some of it has grease on. Um, here's a moving part. Anywhere there's basically a moving part. And oh, it's a little dirty. I think I'm going to just wipe it down a little bit here on the top areas. But no, it, it, it's pretty clean in here. So I'm going to just start. Oh, it looks exactly like Gary's here, Kenmore. <laughs> They're probably all the same, right? So, all right, let's don't touch a spring. Eeks. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to go through here and we are going to just kind of find these spots and I'm going to just put a dab of um, oil on all of them. So getting in here first, this opens up too. There we go. So here's, I'll just show you guys. After you have to sew a few rows on scrap, it gets oil. Yeah, so I will, I'll definitely, I'll definitely sew a little bit just in case oil gets on. But here's, here's my lamp, the, my light. It's probably the original light in there yet too. And uh, all these parts there. But we will get to that front area. That's a whole separate area coming up. So, okay, I'm going to just look at this guide. I'm going to take my uh, brush off of here again. And I'm just going to kind of look for things that look um, the same in here. So it looks like it's basically anything that moves. So in there, got to get in here where metal kind of goes up against metal. So let's keep spinning that around. Um, looks like down in here. Just putting a little dab and right here too. As it moves around, the the oil will, will go on the other parts too. So there, that was the, the four points that we kind of needed there. All right, next up. We are to the inside of this machine a little bit more. It looks like next up is right there. It's another little area that grinds around and around. And then just spinning that around will help move it around, I think. Okay, next up is that wheel. That's looking pretty greasy already. I think it's actually maybe here. Get that a little. It really does hum after uh, after we're done here, though. It just everything just sounds a hair smoother. All right, I'm gonna scooch this down. Let's take a look on this side. It's so intimidating, though. So I'm I'm happy. You know, it's really nice that I have these photos here because it does get super intimidating. But look, I can just look away, and it looks looks just the same. So now we need. We need this little bit here. There it looks like there's um, a cog or something there. And then this little spinny guy there yet. So um, right in here. And then this, these spinny widgets right there. <laughs> spinny widgets, that's what we're calling them now. All right, yeah. So basically I think where it goes around uh, this, connects up to all these things. All right, a little oil on there. Actually, it looks like it wants me to put it right on here, so I'm gonna do that. That spins around, okay. 
last up, let's get in here. That little bobber that comes up. Um, wow, it looks like I just put it right in there. So maybe that spreads it to where it needs to be. And then, then in here as well. All right, that is it for the top. That's all we needed to do. So where's the belt that I was talking about? Well, you can see a little bit of the belt right here. Um, this black part right here is part of the belt. But when we get to, when I turn this upside down, when we do the bottom, that's uh, where you'll really see the belt a lot. And that's where I discovered that the belt was totally busted. So if you imagine like this is like rubber, imagine like a segment of this much of the rubber gone and only like a couple strings there like, um, you know, the size of like dental floss. <laughs> so it's basically dental floss holding it together. All right, uh, now we can put the cover back on. So that just sets right on top. There we go. And then we had one last spot to oil and it was, actually let's lift that off again. Oh wait, no, it's, it's attached to there. I guess we gotta leave it on. All right, just right in there. If we get really close in there, I don't know if you guys can see, it's pretty dark, but down in there is a little bit of a larger circle that goes around. So I'm just gonna get this down in here. And actually I can see a little, I can see a little thread stuck in there. So I'm gonna just stick my, oh, you know what I should do? Just get the brush going in there. There we go. Caught the little thread. <laughs> Wipe that off. Actually, let's just clean it up. Great, so that is done. Let's wipe him up too. He looks kind of dirty in that corner. Eh, I guess not. All right, so moving on. This guy's gonna be so nice when, when it's done here. All right, next page. Um, I'm gonna do this side first, just cause I think this will be easier. So this is the underneath. I'm, I'm gonna lay the machine down on its back and we have to actually unscrew it. This is why I never oiled it and why I never discovered the, that the belt was broken because it just seemed just too intimidating to turn it on its side and unscrew everything and all that. Um, so we'll do this, but let's hit that front area first. So this is what I opened up before. There's that light bulb. We need to get all these little parts in there. So let's flip to the side here. Pop this guy open. It just pops like that. Okay, now we gotta get all of those little parts and there's a lot of moving things in here. Actually, I do think we need to get kind of more, more in there. I'm gonna try and spin you guys too so there's more light again. All right, let's give that a go. Okay, get my oil out here again. It doesn't really, doesn't really look like anything needs to be cleaned in there, which is good. I mean, it should be contained down, down where the actual loss or the thread is and everything. All right, I'm gonna start, here's my diagram. I'm gonna start just at the top and work my way down. Looks like someone at some point put a marking on that one, but I don't know what that's all about. So, all right, we got, we got like seven different parts here. So starting at the top, um, it looks like some of these have just a, like a little hole and I think we're supposed to put the, put the, um, put the oil in the hole there. All right, next up is this little area here. All these parts where like these pistons and stuff go into the holes, all those need to be done. All right, there's a gear. Hmm. Not seeing everything. A little wheel in here. Yep, 
You sure that isn't the arrow at the top? Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, that that was that first first arrow right there. And let's see where else. Right above here. I think I just did that though. And then we gotta get lower. This thing right here. So this gets a little right there. I don't know what that would do. Doesn't seem like there's a moving part there. And, hmm. This goes to here. Metal piece. Oh, well this little spot we got already. Then just down here on this flat area here. That seems a little odd, but we'll, we'll go right there. Oh, maybe where that where the piston goes in the bottom there. That's that's where. This is the part that um, you got to watch for that will get the um, the oil on your on your thread and stuff later. Um, so this is why we'll have to make sure that that gets cleaned up. But this that's what is oiling this whole entire like rod here. So okay, I think we're done done in here. So I'm gonna cover up my oil again and close that up and let's this get this guy on its back. So I do have a little towel here. I'm gonna flip it over gently. This thing is super heavy. Ooh, there we go. Okay, let's get down low here again. So there's the bottom, you can see. Uh, here's Here's the picture of the bottom. We're gonna start unscrewing all these. And it did come, uh, this did come with some screwdrivers too, but I, I believe last time I did it, I needed something a little bit heftier. So I do have another, another uh, flathead screwdriver here to deal with this machine. So, all right, uh, I think actually we're probably pretty good right here. I think you guys can see. So let's start unscrewing them. So they are all labeled <laughs> A, B, C, D, and E. So I am going to kind of keep those in order so I know which one's which. Yeah, these are the ones that I needed a heftier, a heftier screwdriver for. I didn't think that one was working enough for me. This was the scary part that I was always nervous to do. All right, almost. But I'm so happy that I'm doing uh, the machine myself now. I mean, there's, I guess, you know, there's power and knowledge, right? I feel, I feel like I'm taking care of it a little bit more and I just, you know, I enjoy it because I know I'm doing something good for it. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia, I was, I was super scared of all this. And you know what, I, I was so proud of myself when I discovered that the um, that it was the the uh, the belt that was broken, and uh, you know I could go in there. Let's just wipe this off. Uh, I could go into the guy, uh, the the sewing machine place, the repairman, and uh, just was like, I think the belt is broken, and he's like, Yeah, okay, sure, and. Uh, then he opened it up and he's like, yep, sure enough, I think we have one here and we can get it fixed right now. But he wasn't sure that I knew that what I was talking about there, but sure enough, it was the, was the belt. Um, two more here. Ooh, this one's tight. So I'm keeping these in order, uh, alphabetical order. So these were labeled A, B, C, D, and E. So I'm keeping them in that order because some of these are shorter that first one was really long but all these other ones seem kind of short yep another itty bitty one and bottom guy here so we'll oil this we'll put it back together I will plug her in and we will give it a little test see if it sounds different um, 
see what happens. All right, so now we should be able to pull this. Oh, good, it just comes right off. Okay, so there's the bottom. So this is pretty dirty in here. Here we can see a lot more of that fuzz from earlier. I'm just gonna take my rag and wipe this out really quick. So this is where that bobbin, the bobbin is. So it makes sense that there's a bunch of fuzz there. So it's like fuzz and oil down in here. So with the belt, um, shards of the belt were down in here when I, when I opened it up and found out that the belt was broken. So that was a clue. <laughs> if parts of the belt were falling out of it, I had to figure it out that it was the belt. Um, well, that's what it was. All right. It's a little cleaner. That feels, makes me happy that that's a little cleaner. Some stains and stuff from in here, but it's from the seventies. It can be a little old, right? Okay. So here we go. So here is the belt right here. And uh, we can still turn the dial and you can see, like here's where we can really start seeing things happen. We turn this dial and then that's the belt going around there. And uh, as I turned it, you know, I don't know if you can tell, but there it's a little clear and there are like little um, just dental floss sized things in there and ooh, Look, I think we have another crack in here. I'm gonna zoom in on, on here a little bit. I'm gonna have to ask him about that, I think. So here we are. Look, there's a little crack here. So I'm wondering if I might need to, there's a little crack there. I don't know, maybe little wear and tear like this, maybe that doesn't affect it too much, but, and right there. But I'm wondering if I might need to change this more often. Yeah, right there and those, and right there and here. So three different places. So I might have to, uh, one, you know, I think if this ends up just running okay still, I think uh, we'll be fine. Oops, wrong way. But when we're done with this project, or maybe before I do the free motion quilting, well, I don't know, maybe we'll just wing it. Uh, when we're done with this project, the chevrons quilt, uh, maybe I will just bring it in and be like, hey, is this okay? Or you know what? Maybe I'll just do some Google research. How about that? <laughs> All right, um, let's see. We got the bottom here and uh, we need to oil a pile of stuff in there. But that's, you know, it's good to check that stuff. So uh, I'm gonna have to, I'll call him up maybe and ask him about that. Cause I just got this put in not too long ago, you know? So maybe it's not bad until it starts really uh, falling apart, but I don't know, that kind of worries me a little bit. Uh, I, I believe this is, Jane, I think it is a, a 74, I believe. It's a Sears Kenmore machine. So it is an old machine from 74. All right, I'm just trying to locate some of these things. Um, right in here, it looks like. And down in this area there. So let's get the, I don't know. I mean, I must be able to put it in. I mean, he's putting it in somehow. There's no instructions in here on how to put a belt in. So I'm not sure. I bet you we could figure it out. Um, I'm, I'm sure it's something you can order. Yeah, I'm wondering why that happens too. The only thing I can think of is that it's going around such, it's kind of a really hard rubber. So uh, I'm thinking this is such a small area for it to turn that the hard rubber just wants to crack. I mean, that's that's the only thing I can, can really think of would be the problem. Uh, so, um, yeah, I don't know. That's that's the only thing I can, I can really think of. What else moves when we're doing this? Oh, the whole thing moves. All right, that sometimes um, lets us see where to put put oil and everything better. All right, so I think I got all there. Now we just have a little area here. Um, it looks like 
looks like right here. Man, these old pictures, some of these oil parts are like really weird. Oh, take a picture of him and show it when it's apart. Oh, that's a good idea. Um, love your machines. It looks a lot like, oh, the one that makes your Grammys. Oh, fun. Oh, timing is off on it right now. Oh, you should bring it in. Um, I brought in my husband's great grandma's Singer sewing machine because it wasn't working. And um, now that it's all up and running, it's just so neat. It makes me happy every time I, I use it. So uh, if you love that machine, I would totally try and um, get it working. All right, it looks like a little dab here. Okay, I think um, I think that's it. I'm a little curious about looking at that belt a little bit more. Not, I don't want to take it out right now because I don't want to get into all that. That sounds scary, but uh, I am curious. So I know that he took off the side wheel because I had a really hard time getting it on. So I'm wondering if this this probably just slides on and off. It's probably fed from up here, fed down to here, and looped onto there. Maybe we'll we'll take those wheels off. We'll just check it out. But first, let's let's close this up. Let's be done with the bottom here. So we are done um, oiling. Let's just assemble it again. Oop, geez, scared me. <laughs> all right, uh, all right. I got my my um, fellers in order here my screws so let's just go back in the order that I came let's see if I can use we'll use the little little one that came with it for some reason I remember this not working all that well and I had to break out the big one. Oh yeah that's a good idea Patricia let's do that you're right So, uh, unfortunately, he is not, he's pretty old school still. It's not the type of place to, um, that will, oop, there's me, hello, that will uh, have anything that I can send this to, or maybe they have an email now, I don't know. There, right there. And these phones are cool. You can just get so close. There's another couple spots. There we go. Yeah, because I don't want to be in the middle of all our free motion stuff and then having, having this like stop working. Yeah, we almost got to expose threads there. But see, now you can see like in my phone here, the lighting's actually better. I'm going to zoom into my phone. Hold on. There we go. But there, you can kind of see the little threads that it's made up of. But there's the crack there, right? So that's like a whole section of that was was gone uh, when the last time I did this. So, all right, there's there's those cracks, though. That's pretty clear. Let's I'll show you the other ones again. There is one little crack here. I'm going to move you guys over a little bit. One little crack there. You can see right there. And there's a big one right there. So right in there is another, another crack. So all right. No good. So all right, I took those photos. I should be able to, oh yeah, there you can see it really well. I'm hoping, um, hoping maybe he has email. I'm hoping I can just send that to him and be like, do I need to change this or not? But great, perfect. Thanks so much for reminding me to take photos of that. I was, my brain was all on the next thing already. Okay. <laughs> I know you're all saying, take the photo. Uh, it's that seven second delay, you know? We have a seven second delay, I think, uh, between when I can see your comments and between what I'm doing here. <laughs>
<laughs> so you guys are probably yelling it out a long time ago. And I gotta be looking up just right at the right time. <laughs> Woohoo, you guys saved me. <laughs> All right, let's get this closed up. <clears throat> But yeah, actually, this might be something. Um, well, you know what? We are going to have. Oh, but I need the sewing machine for that, too. Well, OK. Well, I have an idea. I could bring down if I do need to bring this in to get a new belt. Well, first of all, he was able to do the belt while I waited. So it might not be an issue. Maybe I'll just go there uh, this weekend and and. Um, or email him and I don't know if they're open. Anyway, I'm rambling in my in my head right now, but maybe I'll uh, email him the stuff and maybe next weekend I'll get a new belt if I need it. Or maybe we can figure it out. But I do, you know, I'm going to want that figured out before we do the free motion quilting. And then we're going to still be doing that sketchbook, uh, the sketchbook cover project as well. And I was like, oh, I can get it fixed while we do the sketchbook project, but we need we need the sewing machine for that. Uh, we are going to be doing some embroidery for that again, though. So if it needs to be in for a while, you know, that could be, it might not have been a brand new belt, Patricia, if he just grabbed it off of his shelf, it could have been there for a while. That's true. That's a good point, actually, <laughs> really. So maybe I'll be like, hey, I just brought this in a little while ago. Why is my belt broken already? And who knows? It might have been, um, it might have been broken from the beginning, right? I should have probably checked before before bringing it home or, or something. I don't know. Live and learn, I suppose. Uh, and uh, yeah, we'll need the sewing machine for, for that project too. But yeah, I want it good to go before, um, before free motion quilting. Oh yeah, man, you guys, I went down to the Super Bowl today, the, all the uh, Super Bowl stuff. So I'm, I'm based in Minneapolis here, you know, where the Super Bowl is happening on Sunday, and they have a whole big thing going on downtown, just everywhere. They have stuff all over, really. Um, and so the hubs and I went down there for the day and, and hung out, and oh my god, it was so cold, though. Like, you don't know cold until, like, you've been there. I was wearing so many clothes, and then still my, my toes were the weak link for me. And uh, man, I wanted to do like a Facebook Live down there. I did a bunch of Instagram stories. So if you guys follow me on Instagram, I'm at Penguin and Fish, all one word uh, on Instagram. And uh, if you click my stories, which will happen if you click my little icon, like my picture with the circle around it, uh, then you'll see my stories. So I did do a few, a few Super Bowl stuff from there. Oof, let's see if I can lift this up again. Ugh. So you can check it out there. But it was so cold. I was going to do a Facebook Live, but I didn't want to take off my gloves or anything. So that didn't happen. Um, we're actually done with the oiling. So I want to give it a try. But now I'm curious about the... Um, I'm curious about the, the belt. So I'm going to just unscrew this. That seems... There's only one screw here. I don't think I can totally mess it up. So I'm going to see if I can take this wheel off and see the belt. So this is freaking me out a little bit. I've never done this before. Ooh, I don't even know if I can get this off. Oh, there we go. Is it coming? Oh, yeah, it is. OK, so ooh, wow. OK, there's stuff underneath here. So we got a uh, little washer. Ooh, maybe I shouldn't be doing this. Well, let's pull it off one at a time. That goes there. What else? Oh, now, now this wheel comes off. Ooh, this I can't pull off. So this, is, this has stuff to do up here, too. I think this is all one piece. Oh, I know. I can see the belt. So they must just pop the belt. They must flip this down somehow and pop the belt out of there. Because if I lift this off and we get in here, like I can see, I can see the, the 
belt. So I can pull, I can pull on this. So that's the belt. So I must be able to like, I don't know, pop that off somehow. Who knows? That's too scary. I think I'm gonna let that just be. <laughs> um, I will ask him about the belt. I'll be like, I just brought this in. Why is my belt like this? And see what he has to say about that and go from there. But let's let's get these parts in the same way. So this was, looks like it lines up like that, I would say. And then this guy got screwed onto here. But I'm curious, I, I'm, I'll ask him, if I have to bring it in again for him to change it, I'll ask him, hey, can you show me how you pop that out of there? I don't know if he'll actually show me because, you know, he wants me to keep coming in there. Uh, but who knows, maybe, maybe I'll figure it out. I'll take a weekend sometime when I'm not sewing and, and try and yank it out or something. <laughs> but for now, I, you know, I never pulled that off before, this, the wheel, that was kind of fun. <laughs> All right. All right, I can still move those, that's good. It was so tight uh, when he brought it back. I just had to have my husband un unscrew it for me, but I think we're good. All right, let's give this guy a little test. So, all right, yeah, YouTube it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to check it out for sure. Oh, you know what? We forgot one thing here, um, a needle. So let me pop you guys down again. We're gonna get lower, get my other tripod out here. All right, let's uh, address this area again. All right, so we can, uh, um, I think we'll get, we'll put this on first. So this is my new presser foot. It, it's an adapter. So I have, I think this is a low shank adapter. So there's high shank machines, there's low shank machines, and then there's angled shank machines. And mine is a low shank, but I wanted to get that whole collection of like 50, 50 presser feet or something. But to do that, I needed, I needed the adapter because um, my, my presser feet come with it already built in. So this is, this, this came with the machine, this one. So I need the low shank adapter, which is this, uh, to be able to grab on all these fancy new ones that don't have, that don't have the shank built in. So, um, we'll just put that shank in. I can unscrew this guy. I had to do a lot of research on that. I didn't know anything about the shanks. So I'm just going to Tighten that up a little bit there. Okay, so that is the shank. Maybe you can fix the issue of the... Oh, yep, so that's what I did. Um, the, Lucy, that's that's um, what I had um, my husband help. Uh, I just, it was too tight. So he was able to hold the, the one wheel and then twist the other one and undo it. I, I just could not, could not get it. So he fixed that for me. Um, so there, so now this just clips clips right in. Boop. There we go. And then I can just, there's a little lever in the back here. Oops, sorry guys. There's a little lever on that adapter. And if I just push up on that, then the presser foot comes out and I can change it with uh, a different one. Oh, so far I'm loving the, the feet. I, I haven't tested a lot of them. This is my quarter inch foot. And um, I've tested that little hammer. We did, we hemmed some things, or wait, is that called hemming? I think they call it something else. Or the rolled hem, it was a rolled hem. And uh, that was really fun. So I tested that one out. I, I wanna play around with the other ones yet too, but not that far yet. But all right, there we go. Let's get a needle in here. So I don't remember what size needle this was. Um, it has the blue marking on it. Let's see if I can read it. It's usually pretty small. Oh, it's a Schmetz uh, 7010. So that's a small, thinner needle. So what a lot of people use is like an 8020 is pretty standard. An 8020 universal needle. I think this is a 70, 7010, which is a little thinner. Um, a 9030 is another one that's thicker. I would use that more for like, um, 
you know, canvas or jeans getting up there. And then there's like jean needles and stuff too. I think I was using a thin needle like this uh, because it makes a thinner hole. And I think that would just be, you know, just nice for what we're doing here. Um, you know, I'm not using jeans or any hefty fabric or, and some of the fabric's pretty delicate too. So this is the worst organization. I need to come up with a better idea for this, but I have just tossed all my needles in here. Um, oh, see, here we go. Jeans needle. That's a, oh, a 9014. So not 30, a 90, 9014. So I can just show you. Um, so this is a 9014 and this is a 7010. You should be able to tell the difference between how thick and thin these are. So there we go. See how thin this needle is and the, the eye is smaller. This, uh, the eye is bigger because, you know, with jeans, you're probably accommodating a larger, larger thread, um, heftier thread. And if the heftier thread went through that, that thin, the, the smaller eye, it would start fraying. So if you have thread that is fraying a lot, you know, it might be your needle. You might need a bigger needle or smaller thread. So we're using that 50 weight thread, which is, which is pretty thin. So our little thin hole there is going to be just fine. But also on the jean needle, the 9014, look how much thicker it is. Um, that's so it can go, uh, you know, it can stand up to the, to going through those thick fabrics and stuff. So um, I'm going to see if I can find another uh, 7010 in my mass of stuff here. And you know, that needle's probably fine still, but it's, I'm getting used to the idea of changing needles often as well. What do we got here? Oh, here, here's a bunch of 7010s. So good, I'm just gonna grab from here. And then I'll toss, I'll toss that other needle. There we go. Pop that back up. Close it up, throw it back in the bin, little jean needle. Or if your thread breaks off and try a bigger needle. Oh, that's a great tip, Lucy. Yeah, so if you're having a lot of those sort of issues, it might be a, a needle to thread uh, not compatibility situation. So, all right, we got the needle. It has that on a, on a home machine like this, it's, an, it's different for an industrial machine, but for a home machine, there's a flat, a flat edge and then a rounded edge. The flat edge um, goes to the back. So I'm just gonna slide it up in there and we'll tighten it up. And that's that, we should be, should be good to go here now. Uh, needles in, foot's clean, it's looking all shiny and clean. Oh, you like the needles in the mason jar idea. I mean, it is it is nice because I can just grab it, but it's such a pain. I should, um, I think I saw on Instagram someone made a whole like felt thing that held all the different sizes. I should try something like that maybe, but it is nice to just throw this um, in my little shelf here. All right, I'm gonna plug this in and we will give it a test. So plugging it in. It's a hefty plug. Ah, got it. All right, we are in business here. So I'm not gonna, you know, it has that bottom here. I'm not gonna worry about putting that on because I'm gonna put my, my sewing table back here and the sewing table doesn't, doesn't have this on. So here we go. Um, I have two pieces of um, just some, some of our scraps here. Let's just pretend we're, we're sewing those together. And then I have uh, my leaders and stuff that I can hang out with too. So let's uh, run it. Ooh, you know what? We need thread and bobbin. So let's do that. Uh, bobbin case, I'm gonna switch to the blue and look, we got a nice full bobbin here. So I always uh, remember I have the, the thread going on the top and I point that away from me and then I point the, this arm towards me from the top. So going over the top, pointing towards me, this thread going over the top and pointing away from me. That's how I know 
how to put it in. And then I just bring, uh, ooh, this is a little dirty. I bring it in to that little slit there, the thread, and pull it over to the front, to that hole there. There, now it's, now it's all the way in, in this hole. So there we go, and you should be able to just hold it and it won't move anymore that way too. You think if you do not turn on your the sewing machine, the light will not work. Oh yeah, so the, the light only turns on. Oh yeah, the power is off and the power is on. I don't have any access to the light, um, you know, being separate from the power. So if the light's on, that means the power is on. All right, plugging this in here. So I, I pull this bar back, that kind of locks it in place, and then I can slide it over that um, kind of rod that's in there. And I'm gonna put this blue on here. If I go up here, I suppose we can can see see throwing it on here. Let's find an end. Okay, going around. I come all the way up and pop it back down. Ooh, it's feeling kind of tight in there. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes it gets a little too far pushed in there. There we go. That still feels pretty tight, but we'll give it a go. Oh, let's snip that end. That's not going to get us anywhere. Oops, sorry. Snip. You know what, now that the light's on, I am seeing a little bit of fuzz hiding in here. There we go, got it. I think this got stuck, there we go. We are almost ready to test and then we'll be done for the evening here. All right, back down here, I'm gonna just thread the needle. Oh, that's, that's why it was so tight in the, in the wheel, the tension rod, because my presser foot was down. Not gonna have it down. All right, got it in there. All right, feels good. So, all right, to bring the, the bobbin thread up, I just hold the top thread, go backwards on my wheel until I can see the thread underneath here going around. And then I pop it up. There's a little loop down there. And I just grab my scissors and grab that loop. That's the from the bobbin thread coming up. All right, now we can give it a test. Need some thread for that to work. All right. I'm just gonna lower the foot right there. So what I wanna test here is just get the tension right again. It should be fine, I'm hoping, but I wanna see what the tension's like. And then I also want to um, make sure that there's not oil going going everywhere either. So let's let's see if we can oops, excuse me. Let's see if we can hear a difference at all. Um, it should should sound a little smoother. And you know, I think it was sounding a little chunky, like chunk 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 a little bit. And that isn't happening as much anymore, I don't think. Or maybe it's just my all in my head, but I don't know. All right, tension is looking okay. I can't see any thread popping up there or here. I'm looking for um, little bits of the thread from the other side popping up, but I don't see any. I think we're good. Let's, uh, I'll sew a few more times down this row just to uh, see if any oil is coming down, but it looks, looks okay. We'll just keep going.
let's get another ender in here. We're all good and smooth, and we may have discovered a problem from cleaning it, too. So, um, I think this was good. We are definitely more in the know tonight. Yes, it's sounding, it's sounding smooth, isn't it? I think it's sounding smoother. All right, let's, let's see. I am not seeing any leaking of oil. Um... I think we are probably good to go. I'm going to call it swell. Yeah, it does sound a little quieter. I think so too, Robin. So, all right. I think we're ready to go for, for Monday. And um, we do have that little issue with the belt. And, um, you know, I'll, let's, I'll show you guys again. If you're just coming in, um, when we took this apart, um, there was some belt issues. See? So um, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show uh, my um, sewing machine repair guy. I'm gonna show him that the belt that he just replaced uh, a couple months ago already has some cracks in, and this was my problem before. So um, discovered a problem here. Uh, except for that, we should be all oiled up and ready to go. So um, I will, before Monday, I will set up my table again. I'll put my table, the extension table on here. We'll get the uh, cutting boards out again. But I'm going to see if before then I can get some info on this belt and see if that's something I need to replace now or if I'll be okay for a little while. But all right, guys, I'm going to flip you around and we will call it a night here. Hello, so I'm a little lower here tonight. I got you guys on a low tripod. Uh, but thanks again for uh, helping me through that cleaning. Yes, Patricia, we did it. Yeah, I think it sounds quieter too. Uh, it's gonna just run a little smoother. Um, oh gosh, just cleaning all that fuzz out of there was worth it. And yes, Rosalie, I'm so happy that I'm doing the oiling of it myself, oiling and cleaning it myself now and being okay with unscrewing things and putting them back. Um, I think I think it was good to learn. I feel so much more in control of the machine and I feel like um, I'm someone that knows what they're doing maybe a little bit more <laughs> now. So I'm happy about that. And yeah, we discovered a potential issue by uh, doing the cleaning as well. So I what how I've been doing the cleaning lately is just kind of in the middle of or at, at at good stopping points, really. So a lot of people do it when uh, they run out of bobbin. We just did a little while ago, and we're actually almost out of this this bobbin. And uh, you know, we just got done with those half chevrons, and it seemed you know it was dirty, it was fuzzy. Uh, when it gets like that, then it's a good time to switch things out again. So we got a new needle in there, we got it oiled, cleaned, and yeah, discovered that belt issue. So awesome! I'm totally stoked. Uh, I needed, yes, I needed, needed my little book with me, my, my, uh, old Kenmore sewing, uh, manual here from the seventies. I love that image on the front, uh, that helped me out a ton. Yeah. Maybe he'll just give me a different belt or, you know, I'd love to learn how to get that in. Uh, we tried to get that out, uh, tonight or just, you know, I've never unscrewed the wheel like that before. So we got to peek inside more than what I have done before. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens, but we'll be humming a little bit better on Monday for sure when we start those other chevrons. So uh, just again, if you are coming in, we are working on the Charming Chevrons quilt. We were at a good stopping point yesterday on it, so I decided to clean the machine tonight. So if you wanted to take a look at how I did that, the replay of this will go up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies. I mean, every machine is different, but uh, you can kind of get a, a glimpse on the inside a little bit uh, uh, tonight. So thanks again for joining me, everyone, and have a great weekend. I won't see you guys again until, until Monday. So have a good weekend, and I will see you then again at 8.30 p.m. Central. See you later. Good night.